I made this video because it's important to me that you succeed in TECM 5191. What you're going to find is at the beginning of every module, I'll have a brief video that walks you through what's happening that week and how I think you should best approach the work that you have to do. All right, here we go. The first tip I have for you to succeed in the course is to read. In fact, the first item you see in each Canvas module is a written overview. Read it carefully every time. It will always include a short video from me helping you think through your weekly activities and how they relate to overall course goals and upcoming assignments. I recommend you go through the overview by midnight each Monday. You'll have one assigned source of content about the topic of each module. Some sources have to be read, others need to be watched, some have to be listened to. The sources are the foundation for your weekly discussion posts. Usually, I recommend you go through the instructional materials before you attempt any assignments for that week. That typically means well before midnight on Thursdays, but in Module 1, you've got a couple of smaller assignments you can complete without the instructional material. Your assigned source in the first module is a report of a survey of tech comm professionals about their challenges. For Module 1, there are a lot of small activities required. They help to get you set up for the rest of the course. The first thing you should do this week is follow the assignment instructions to join Slack. This is the instant messaging tool we're going to use for unplanned and informal messages, and also for your team interactions a little later in the course. Slack is commonly used in tech workplaces, so it's good for you to gain some literacy with it. As soon as you get set up, download the app for your phone. Then personalize your notification preferences. I've estimated that getting signed up will take you maybe 30 minutes. Second thing is to follow the assignment instructions to complete the baseline digital literacy survey. It won't take long, maybe 15 minutes but it will supply both you and me with some important information about your starting point with the literacies covered in the course. This task ensures you'll become aware of your own as well as your approach to developing new literacies as well. Third thing, spend some time with the instructional materials. Most weeks you're going to be assigned a reading, as I said, could be a video or a podcast as well as a 15 to 30 minute lecture where I help you understand the main topics in the module. Although there's no specific deadline to go through these materials, they're meant to support the work you do throughout the week. So I recommend you make time for them early. In module one, there's a reading and a lecture of around 20 minutes. And I've estimated you should spend an hour with the instructional materials during module one. The fourth thing this week is to read two assignment descriptions. One for the web portfolio and the other for the web portfolio preparation. This is the most complex task for the week, so I'm going to say more about it in the overview in just a second. Last thing to read this week, discussion board assignment. I'm going to say more about that in a minute as well. So the second general tip for succeeding in the course is to plan. Time management is critical in any online course, but it's even more important in a grad level course where you do a complete semester's worth of work in half the normal time. To help you plan, each module over you in Canvas has a list of tasks for that week. Task deadlines in the course are divided into midweek, that's usually midnight on Thursdays, and end of week, that's always midnight on Sundays. I've listed each task in the module overview with an estimated time to complete. I mentioned some of those on the previous slide when I talked about what you should be reading. Each module includes approximately 10 hours worth of work. Module 1 is an exception. This week the tasks take around 7 hours because of your need to become acclimated to how the course works. The syllabus link on Canvas takes you to a chronological listing of assignments. You've seen that before if you've had other courses in Canvas. It also takes you to a Gantt chart like the one that you see here. You can download it. It shows course modules in columns and assignments in rows. The colors designate different categories of assignments, so purple for the web portfolio. See how it extends across the entire row? Orange is for the single source team project. Green for the screencasting project. 
Finally, blue is for the other activities in the course. So let's look at midweek column in module one. You see in purple, you start the web portfolio project by doing the prep assignment. Then look down in blue, see the activities I listed on the previous slide, join Slack, complete the baseline survey, etc. Now look at the end of week column for module one. There are additional deadlines at the end of the week. The web portfolio prep assignment, then submitting your discussion post. You should also notice some other activities like the web portfolio extends throughout the entire course because you should be collecting artifacts put in the portfolio during the course. My hope is this view of your workload in the course will help you plan ahead. Notice that midweek assignments are due on Thursdays at midnight, with the exception of Thanksgiving week, the deadline would be on Wednesday, and our final week, which is a short one and ends on a Friday. Let's focus on one of your biggest tasks this week. Your complete web portfolio is due at the end of the course, but this week's prep assignment gets you started right away. It has three components. First, you've got to read the requirements for the end of course assignment now so you become familiar with them. You also need to read the prep assignment instructions. Then second, you need to obtain web space for your portfolio. You've got to decide now where you'll be publishing your portfolio for this course and for the MA program. All MA students have to create a web portfolio targeted for potential employers. You do this in place of a thesis. Near the end of your coursework, that portfolio, along with an essay, is examined by a faculty committee to determine whether you've demonstrated competence as a technical communicator. The assignment description on Canvas includes the guidelines for the MA students. For this course, WordPress is the preferred option for putting your portfolio on the web. What you see on this slide is one of thousands of WordPress themes for professional portfolios. There are both free and paid options for WordPress. My lecture in Module 1 explains why I recommend it. By the end of Module 1, you must submit the URL where your portfolio site has been established to the Web Portfolio Prep Assignment on Canvas. The rest of the prep assignment requires you to analyze three sample portfolios and develop a list of best practices you're going to follow for the content and design of your own site. There's a link to a specific site with a collection of portfolios in the assignment description. You'll submit those best practices for my review in the Web Portfolio Prep Assignment on Canvas at the same time you submit the URL. I've estimated the time required to complete this whole assignment at three hours. So before you complete the discussion post at the end of each weekly module, you'll have to read or watch or listen to some material. There'll be a source like a reading or webinar and then usually a video lecture from me. The discussion post assignments list several requirements. One, that you share two things you learned from the instructional materials. And two, that you respond to a post by a classmate. The third requirement varies somewhat. For many modules, you'll reflect on your experiences learning the digital literacies involved in course project that week. But for module one, you're going to share a brief video introducing yourself and your career or course goals. This week, I've estimated the time required to complete the discussion post assignment at two hours. The third and final tip for succeeding in the course is to ask. If after you've read and tried to plan, you have questions or concerns, I'm here to help you succeed. One reason we use Slack is because it's so easy to send quick messages back and forth. I will always answer you within 12 hours, but often it will take me only a few minutes. Okay, so finally, one of the main reasons that I ask you to schedule a Zoom meeting with me in the first few weeks of the course is because I wanna make it easy for you well, maybe I want to make it hard for you to avoid asking me questions. If you're ready, schedule your meeting now.